Binance is by far one of the easiest and safest ways to buy cryptocurrencies. If you're new to crypto and want to get your feet wet by purchasing some Bitcoin, Ethereum or other cryptocurrencies, then Binance may be a great option for you. I will show you step by step how to buy cryptocurrencies on Binance in this beginner friendly tutorial. And as a bonus, towards the end of the video, I will show you how to earn some passive income using your Binance account. So make sure to stick with me to the end. But for now, let's get started. First, click on the link in the description or type this into your browser. It will take you to the correct Binance sign up page to get you started if you don't have an account yet. And from here, you just have to enter in your email, password, then click create account. Pull this slider to the correct position. Now get your verification code from your email. Type that in and you're all set. Your account is ready to go. And now let's go to their homepage by clicking on go to dashboard. Next, we need to secure our account by adding two-factor authentication. And I'm going to use Google verification instead of the phone verification here. Click on that. And now we just follow the steps provided by Binance. Either download the app from the App Store or Google Play. And now we scan the QR code. Click next. Click next again. Now click here to get the code. So it will be sent to your email address. Type that code in from your email. And then type in your new code from your Google authentication and click submit. And that's it, it has been done successfully. So now that our account has been successfully set up, we're now ready to go and purchase our cryptocurrencies. And there are two ways of doing this. The first method is the faster way, which has higher fees. And the second method is the slower way, but has less fees. It's up to you which one you wanna choose, but I'm gonna show you both here. So now I'll show you the first way, which is the faster way and that is using your debit or credit card. And you can do this by going to buy crypto and click on credit slash debit card. It'll take you to this page where you can choose the currency that you wanna sell and the currency that you wanna buy. In this example, I'm happy to stick with US dollars and I'm also going to be buying Bitcoin. So also keeping it the same is fine. But if you wanna change any of the assets, then all you have to do is click here and choose the one you want. But for this one, USD is fine, so I'll select that. Now let's say I wanna buy 100 US dollars worth of Bitcoin. I would just type in 100 here. Or if you want to buy a certain amount of Bitcoin and you don't care what the dollar value is, then you would just type in, for example, 0.002 Bitcoin. And that is worth $76.89. And if you're happy with that, then you just click on continue. And now we're presented with a page to add our credit or debit card. But if you have not verified your personal details yet, this page will not come up. You'll have to go and click through to the verification page and verify your account instead. So you can see here, my account is already verified, but if you haven't yet, you'll have to click on verify now. And here's an example where you have to either provide your driver's license or your passport details, and then upload an image of yourself, then take a photo of your face, and that's part of the verification process involved. This is required on all exchanges if you ever want to purchase any of your cryptocurrencies with your fiat money. So now let's say you've done that. Now I'm gonna click on add new card. Now my card has been successfully added. I'll click on continue. Now this will take me to the final page where you can see the amount of Bitcoin I'm gonna receive, what the rate is and what my fees are. You can see my fees here for this transaction will be around 2%, but it can go up as high as 3.5% using this method. So even though it is really easy, as you can see here, it is very expensive. So for a two or $300 transaction, it's not a big deal because the difference will only be a few dollars. But if you're buying thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of crypto, then I definitely recommend you use the next option where you'll save a ton of money on fees. You can see here from the fee schedule, it can go as low as 0.075% if you decide to use BNB as the fee payment method. So this is around four or five times cheaper than the first method. The only negative on this second method is it's gonna take a few days for your payment to arrive to Binance because it's gonna use the bank transfer method. Here's a quick question for you. What percentage of your portfolio do you plan on holding in Bitcoin and why? Let me know in the comments section below. We'll go back to the buy crypto section and click on bank deposit. And now we just select the currency you want to use. In this case, I'm happy with the US dollars. So I just select that and you can see the fees is zero dollars. So that's a good start, right? Now we can click on continue. For this part, just put in the amount you want to deposit. 1000 as an example, click on continue, click confirm. 
and now you're presented with the information that you need to put in when you're transferring through your bank account. So what you need to do is to log into your bank account and make a payment to Binance using this exact information with the reference code added. Make sure you click on this to copy all the lines one by one so you don't make any mistake. This is very important. A quick note here is that your USD will be deposited as BUSD. This is Binance version of the US dollar. So when you're trading, this is the one that you should be selecting. And the other thing is, it'll take two to four business days for your funds to arrive, which is normal for a bank transfer anyway. But just so you're aware, it's not gonna be there immediately. And now let's say our funds have arrived into Binance. The next step is to go to trade and click on convert. This will take us to the page where you can swap your assets. So as I said, I've deposited US dollars. So I'm gonna click here and type in BUSD and there's my thousand dollars and I want to convert it to Bitcoin as I'm trying to buy Bitcoin. But if you want to buy a different currency, also you can click here and choose the one you want. But for this example, let's say $100 worth of Bitcoin and I just click on preview conversions and it's going to show you my rate and the amount that I'll receive. So you can see this is as easy as the first method, except you just have to wait a little while for your bank transfer to come through. Do you like the level of detail I'm providing you in my Binance tutorial so far? If yes, make sure to let me know by liking my video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on more quality content that I'll be releasing every week. But now if you're more advanced or you want to be more strategic and set some buy orders below the current value or set some take profit amounts, then you'll need to use their advanced method. And that is to go to trade and click on advance and it will take you to this dashboard here where you can see on the left hand side is the candlestick chart where it is connected to TradingView and you can do some technical analysis and draw lines and things like that before you buy to make a better informed decision. And in the middle is your order book and on the right hand side is where you can click buy and sell your asset. And there are three different types of orders, the limit, market and stop limit. So in this tutorial, I'm not gonna go through the limit and stop limit orders as they are much more complicated and need its own dedicated video to explain to you. And I've done that video here if you wanna check it out and go through it. The next thing we want to do is go to this arrow here and go to fiat and under fiat I'm going to choose the BUSD because that's what I deposited. But if you added a different currency like the Australian dollar or the euro then you would click on these buttons here instead. But I'll click on BUSD and now I want to scroll down to BTC right because we want to buy Bitcoin. So I'll click there and that's the trading pair that I want to choose. So now that we've got the right pairing you can go ahead and go to market and type in, let's say $100 I want to buy worth of Bitcoin and you simply just click on buy BTC and this will execute a market order and purchase the closest value on your order book immediately for you. And it will show your BTC balance available will be more than zero. It'll be the $100 that we bought. So now that you have successfully bought your Bitcoin on Binance, highly recommend you get a crypto wallet to store all your cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. This is very important because if your exchange like Binance or Coinbase get hacked, then your funds will not be lost as you currently control your own keys in your own wallet if you get your own private wallet. If you keep it on the exchange, it can easily be lost if the exchange gets hacked. So at a minimum, I recommend you get a mobile wallet and a free and good one to use is Trust Wallet. This one's created by Binance themselves, but you can download it to your mobile and this will have your own private keys given to you. So you own the wallet. So even though this is free, it's not the best option. This is because your wallet is just on your phone and is always online, therefore it's still vulnerable to attacks. But if you've only invested a few hundred dollars, this is a good option to go with, as the next option can cost you a lot more to get started. So the best option and the one I recommend is to use a hardware wallet, like a Trezor wallet or a Ledger wallet. These hardware wallets are essentially a USB stick which you plug into your computer to access your wallet and make transfers online. But the beauty of this option is, if your USB is not connected to the computer, it is essentially a cold wallet. It's not connected to the internet and no one can hack you if they don't have your private keys which you're not sharing anyway. So this is the safest and best option to go, but it's going to cost you about $100 to buy one of these hardware wallets. And if you want more information on choosing the best mobile wallet or hardware wallet, then you can check out this video also, which I've done the deep comparison on the best ones. So the next thing I want to show you about Binance is the Binance Earn program. So this is a really cool way that you can earn some free interest on the cryptocurrency that you're currently holding on Binance. So it's kind of like a bank savings account, but for cryptocurrencies. So we want to go to Finance and click on Binance Earn. So you can see here, if we scroll down straight away, there's a lot of different products that Binance have, like the BNB Vaults, Normal Staking, 
fixed term savings and flexible savings. I won't go through each of these in details right now, but I have a fully dedicated video here, which guides you through all of this Binance Earn step by step. So check that out if you want more information. But let's go down and take a look at one of them here. So I'm just gonna pick the savings one for now, click on view more, and it will take me to my Binance savings page where you can see that they are flexible and locked savings where you can transfer your funds into these pools to start earning interest. For example, if we have some BUSD and we want to earn some interest on that, by going to the flexible savings option, you'll get a 2.19% APY. But if we go down to the locked savings, then you're gonna earn 5.31% APY. So you can see by locking your assets for a certain amount of time, you're gonna earn more interest. So if I go to 14 days, it's even more, 30 and 90. Can go up to as high as 6%. So that is a worthwhile thing to do, I believe, especially if you're holding your crypto assets on Binance. But if you're not gonna make use of this Binance Earn, then I recommend you transfer all your crypto into your own crypto wallet, as this will be the safest way of storing your cryptocurrency. So if you're ready to proceed with Binance and want to learn about the next step you should take, then I recommend you check out this video here. But if you think the Binance exchange is not the right one for you, then this is my number one alternative, which I recommend you check out. And I'll see you over in the next video.